Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me switch and see here. Hey, hey guys, we are on air. <laughs> All right, so what you're seeing here is a, a quadrupedal robot, uh, or what they call ground, ground dog, okay? Uh, ground robot or robot dog. So this one has the depth camera, a ladder scanner. So this is 2D ladder scanner. We also have a 3D ladder scanner. Um, so we can carry different sensors for the robot to scan the building, uh, maybe to evaluate uh, the environment. We just received this one, we're still learning. <laughs> Not moving. Spawn, spawn mode. Just to restart. Restart? Yeah. Okay. It's pretty heavy. Okay. So, can I walk slowly? Oh, what's up? Just reaching to spawn mode? Yes, yeah. I'm trying to. Just run a little bit. Let me try. Yeah, we're actually still learning this. Uh, this this dog is supposed to kind of flip in the air, go over, and send data. You know, which a lot of functions we are just st still trying to figure out. You, want, you guys want to try what? You want to uh, try? Vision. Oh, vision? Okay. Yeah. So this is a controller and showing, oh, it's showing the camera view, right? Do you have the follow? Oh. Okay, so now I can see the recognize uh, Tian Yu and the follow Tian Yu automatically. Can you guys try the slime mode? I suggest then we just restart. It. Oh, okay. Let's, let's restart. It. Okay. So, yeah, just do that, and I can I can tell the class what's going on here. So, uh, what you what you saw was the manual control of the robot. Like uh, you can control the the running, the walking, turning, jump, uh, all the functions of the robot. Um, but also there's a, the one function called slime semi simultaneous localization and the mapping technology. Um, so in that way, the robot will use the LiDAR to scan the environment, build a map of the environment, recognize other obstacles. Then it, it can navigate itself. Like say, I wanted to go to a different room. So the robot will plan out the path, shortest the path, and also to uh, get over all the obstacles. Uh, that technology is called SLAM. And this uh, robot does uh, have the SLAM function built in. What you see here is actually you can imagine this is also a computer with a Nevada 
graphic card built in. That graphic card is processing all the spatial information and plan all the navigation paths in real time. Connect with you can okay. first. I go to the sample. That's the lidar. Lidar is is uh, is carries. Right, now it's slam mode. It's not slam mode, okay. Yeah, it's here. Okay. okay, as you can see, it's doing the scan and identify, you know, the obstacles and everything. So it can navigate itself now, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a very small space, but let's try. So how how you run it? See, um, we plotted the path on the screen. I started the slam mode. Yes, I guess so. So. Take some time to load and make it work. This should make it. <laughs> make it a go. Right? Yeah. <laughs> is that because the, the pass is too short? No, no. This, this whole length is okay. Or meant to any obstacles? I think so. Yeah. It's not executing that way. This is not I'm moving. This is not not same mode. No, you, you can see it's like real time scanning the room. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but if you enter the same mode, you cannot move it. Oh, mm -hmm. so some other kind of manually control that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since you were manually control that, so it was not in slam mode now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not okay. yeah, we need to switch to the random mode. It has multiple now, normal mode, uh, spot mode. Spot mode, it can, it can run very fast. Um, and also it's more flexible uh, if you kick it. And also slam mode is the self-navigation. I guess we need to switch to slam mode now. Oh, okay. He said password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like a password. Like executing the whole thing. <laughs> I know. So we just are trying to avoid that you randomly press some button and enter the slam mode, right? So, okay.
this symbol. That should be, yeah. No, it's still not moving. I just not respond. No, we started. Yeah. We start that. Fast. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, let's give it a more try. We're just trying to do this self navigation, we just cannot enter that correct mode. Did you try to let it go on hallway? It's just no, no. too slippery, or let, let we can try it. It should be fine. No, it oh, yeah, oh, now it's, now it's working. So we're not controlling that, but it's trying to do this. Uh, it awarded that off circle automatically and going to the destination. So actually, <laughs> no, 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 but we, okay, let's say another position and now it's more so. So cannot get, yeah, 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 we need to give it away. Yeah. Yeah, I think if we, that the room is too small for him for it. Hey, can we go back to the uh, manual control mode and let's go outside and see how it works? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who is the best uh, train operator now? No. Let's remove that. Yeah. Let's let's try to go to the hall and see what happens. Just just make it slow. <laughs> yeah. Now it's fine. Yeah. Go that way maybe. Oh, it's very fast, right? Yeah, See? <laughs> watch out, watch out. Now turn around. Yeah, it's, it's working, it's working well. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I walked the dog. It should be fine. Yeah. We need to look at the, the, the motion functions. I really want to see it slip, slip over. That's a fuse. <laughs> Turn it around. Or maybe send it back to the to the lab. Yeah. All right, thank you guys. I have these two guys. Hey, let's schedule a, a meeting with, with, uh, with the company and maybe we can ask them to go over all the functions. Okay, okay. thank you guys. Okay, guys, I'm back. So what do you think? It's cool, but uh, uh, can it, uh, uh, like, can it does the scanning while it's moving? Yes, exactly. So mm -hmm. 
uh, slime actually allows the, the robot to move, scan, build a map, and plan all the paths in real time. So that's actually the, the same technology. And also this robot can climb stairs and go downstairs. We just received the robot last week. Um, so we didn't get a chance to learn uh, all the functions of it. I guess that's why we still need to, to learn more things. Uh, let me show you some quick video about this, um, about this robot. Uh, professor? Yeah. Could it be uh, controlled via voice, com voice commands? Yes, this robot supports that. It just, we still need to learn. Actually, it has more functions. Um, let me play this video and show you. Okay. Um, share the launched. Okay. Need a professional logo for your brand? I've used the new Wix logo maker to create one for my startup. I'll show you how. First, go to Wix Logo Maker to start. And watching it on video, the A. Here it is. Can you guys hear the sound? This robotic dog could be yours okay. for around ten thousand dollars. Now it's true, most of us don't really have an extra ten G's lying around for a robotic dog, but given the market for them, that's a surprisingly low price. The A1 is the newest quadruped from robotics company Unitree. You may remember Unitree's last four-legged robot, the Lycago. That debuted last year with a price tag of $45,000. Now, Unitree hopes to reach a broader market with Lycago's significantly cheaper younger sibling. The A1 is really impressive to watch. Weighing in at just 26 pounds, it has a top speed of 3.3 meters per second and it can carry about 11 pounds. It looks pretty nimble. Let's see that again. Like any good dog, A1 can follow its owner around. It uses two depth sensing cameras to perceive its environment. And watching it on video, that seems to work pretty well. A1 can adapt to a variety of terrains like stairs, gravel, roads and hills, things like that. We first got a preview of the A1 back in February. In that video, we saw it do a backflip but Unitree told me it can do more everyday dog tricks, you know, like roll over and jump. The battery can run for up to two and a half hours per charge. Now compare that with the latest version of Lycago, which gets up to three hours, can carry about 20 pounds, and weighs in at just under 50 pounds. That greater weight is probably why its top speed is a little lower than A1, at 1.4 meters per second. That's true, this isn't the first time we've seen a robotic quadruped. In fact, most of you are probably thinking, these really remind me of a certain mechanized mutt named Spot. We first met Spot as we know it now back in 2017. Created by heavy hitter Boston Dynamics, gained notoriety for its ability to open doors and shake it on the dance floor. Spot even inspired the Black Mirror episode Metalhead. And of course, there's MIT's Mini Cheetah, which may not have Spot's sick dance moves, but it can do this. Now, maybe one of the most significant differences with Unitree's robots is that you can order one right now. Boston Dynamics does have an online form to lease a Spot for what it calls an early adopter program, but right now Spot isn't really intended for consumers. It's more meant for companies, government agencies, looking for things like surveillance and recon. In fact, most recently, Spot's been helping out at a Boston hospital as a triage for COVID patients. Now, the A1, which you can actually buy right now, is targeted more to the consumer. Unitree told me once a customer places their order and pays, they'll have their robot in about two to three months. And aside from just looking like a lot of fun, I could actually see myself using one of these if I had that kind of cash on, say, like a long hike or a rock climbing trip, something like that. But let's face it, at $10,000, we're not gonna be seeing these under a lot of Christmas trees next holiday season. Still, Unitree has shown that the price- Okay, and this is the, what do we call the slime? You know, everything's in real time. So hopefully I can find a good example. Um, let me see this one. This one doesn't show you 
the uh, algorithm part of that. Um, how about this one? Let me skip all the hardware part. Yep. So as you can see, basically scanning environment, build the map and navigate, uh, plan the path and navigate uh, all at the same, in the real time, all at the same time. So it's moving and building the map and moving. This is first person view from the robot, the robot view, and this is the model it's building up. All right, that's it, guys. You know, uh, hopefully, do you have any question regarding the robot? So hopefully, uh, if you guys are still here next year and when this uh, COVID-19 is, is cleared, you know, you're more than welcome to come to our live and check it out. Um, and hopefully at that time, uh, we will know much better uh, about this robot and have some interesting functions going on. Okay, guys, so if you don't have further question, like I said, um, next week we have the final presentation, so work with our team members. Uh, and uh, we will have about a half hour to go over um, you know, some of the questions that might appear in the final exam next week. And we will have our next week, uh, we have our final exam. Um, let me check. So the final exam would be on uh, November the 16th. So that's a Wednesday, same time, November the 16th, you know, about two weeks. And uh, uh, I will send you guys a, a Google Doc link. It's online exam and it's open book. You can definitely search whatever you need to, um, but just uh, be prepared. You know, the, the questions can be, uh, there will be a lot of questions. So uh, you need to focus on the final exam. All right. So if no further question, uh, see you guys later and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Okay. See you guys later. Thank you. Thank you.